okay. 7.30. We've got quite a turnout tonight. So welcome to everyone. And we will begin our meeting. Dan is unable to join us tonight. Um, but because we had promised him that we would start our meetings with a Pledge of Allegiance, is there someone who would want to um, lead us in the pledge? Sure, I'll do it. I'll do okay. it. Okay. All right, Fran. <laughs> All right, I'm standing. All right. All right. I pledge allegiance to, to the, the flag, flag of the United States, States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, indivisible with liberty, with liberty and, justice and justice for all. Excellent. Thank you, Fran. Thank you, everyone. Okay. Um, now, Sherry had inserted into our um, agenda public participation. And since we have some of the public here, um, does anyone want to, um, does, do any of our guests have anything to say to the commission? Hi, this is Marie Ray, um, co-chair of the Commission on Disabilities. I just wanted to be present tonight because I understood that Bill Renault was going to be speaking on the, um, the pathway at Floral Way. And I just wanted to um, let all of you know that, uh, you know, I know that you expressed some concerns about some of the work that's going to be done there. And they're doing work to try to make that path more accessible. And I just wanted you all to know that the Commission on Disabilities is, um, we're sensitive to your concerns and we're here to collaborate in any way necessary so that the town can do what they can do and do it in a manner in which you all feel comfortable as well. Well, thank you, Marie. Um, as it happens, um, I did uh, meet with the town engineer um, prior to the meeting, and he is coming to our next meeting. Okay. So um, <laughs> this is on the agenda for um, just, uh, we're just going to touch on this issue with the commission tonight, but he is going to uh, come and, and, and we're really going to discuss it next time. Okay, well, then I won't stay on, but I just really wanted to introduce myself to all of you to let you know that, you know, we're here and however we can support you so that Bill can do what he needs to do for the town and you folks, you know, can have a comfort level and get your concerns met. Please That's great. don't hesitate. Could I, could I say something, uh, John? Certainly, Sophia. John. I'm John Sophia. Um, uh, with regard to the pathway, I think without specifics about the pathway, I think one of the things that's really important here is that there has been a breakdown in communication that Bill Renault does not think he needs to consult the, the uh, historic commission for a project like this. I mean, that's clearly his, his approach to this. And I think there's something that very important that should come out of this. We should have some idea of, of an approximate perimeter for what you would call the historic area of Wakefield. And anything that happens within that area is directly needs to be okayed, approved, considered by the historic commission. And you can take a map. I mean, in five minutes, you can take a map and, and circle a nice area that would be the historic downtown center of Wakefield. And that historic boundary should be should be controlled. Things that happen within there are the purview of the historic commission, as well as what other agencies planning it. I think this is an important thing that needs to be done because it's a it's a systemic problem that Bill didn't think this was necessary. If I if I could speak, Julie yep. Scott. I'm done. Hi, Julie. Hi. How is everybody? Everybody's well. Everybody looks well. Um, 
Nancy, I, I've Googled the Wakefield Historical Commission significant sites. This is found online and I'm always aghast at how, how little people know about this. It was a Google, um, real easy to place to find, talks about significant sites in Wakefield and all the work you guys have been doing. Um, since the 1980s, close to 400 properties and areas were recognized architecturally, architecturally geology wise and historically significant. And it sort of ties in with what Mr. Sophia said. It's something we really need to talk about. It's not just the, um, the floral way area we need to talk about. I go to Vision 2000 stuff. I've been to Envision programs, 2030, whatever they're called. And I never really heard much about this. And I don't know when this came to be. I'm in so many groups that are involved with the lake. I'm involved with WCNA, FOLQ. And when I saw the final stuff in the paper and I, I wrote to Bill Renault, what my first question was, the cemetery is in such a historical area and it's been overseen so much by our fabulous historical commission. Have they been consulted? And his, his, his answer concerns me. He said a project of this type wouldn't trigger their historic commission's jurisdictional review with a demo delay bylaw. So I did not reach out to them separately. Public Works Director Joe Conway did conduct a site walk with Mary Eldridge of the Hartshorn House, where we reviewed the planned project, which included the path paving, the planning of the stormwater enhancements and the modified tennis courts. We were asked to include a new cedar picket fence for the Hartshorn House into the project, which we agreed to do. But there's WCNA, there's FOLQ, all sorts of groups bring thousands of people into the town every year. Um, and you could argue FOLQ brings people to the town every day, WCNA with their festivals and other things that they do, the tree lighting and the egg hunt. It, it is so disappointing to be involved in so many of these groups and to not be asked to participate. And all of a sudden this project is, I mean, it's only, it's thank God it, it was delayed. It was supposed to be very near completion. And thankfully with this delay, we, we get some input now. And I don't know how that happened. I wanna know the bigger picture of the scope and maybe with um, Mr. Dombrowski here, thank you for attending. Um, how is this going to tie in? What is the overall big picture? I don't think it's just going to stop at the floor away. Be naive to think that. Would this be an extension going into downtown somehow? If it is going into downtown, I want to know the whole big picture that some people have been talking about and not bringing it to other um, invested groups who bring in also grant money to the town. My concern, and I haven't, this might just be my concern because I'm an um, I'm MIA family and the, the um, Veterans Common means the world to my family. We don't have a gravesite, but I keep envisioning because I've gone to all these meetings. I would be devastated to think that anybody would consider, and I haven't heard this and I'm not starting a rumor, but it, it would make sense that somebody might think to put a, some sort of a pathway, bikeway through the Veterans Common area. I would, I would, I would blow a gasket over that one. I, I wanna hear, it's not just this plan. I know there are other plans out there. I demand to be included in the process and in the discussions because I'm, I'm fearful for some of these decisions that are made because these groups bring in so much quality work to the town and they're smart, smart people with varying backgrounds and they need to be included, it's fair. Julie, I'm very grateful to you and to John Sophia as well for bringing this to our attention because we really had not, and, and as you say, this is a, a bigger problem and as John says, it's a systemic problem mm -hmm. that the historical commission is never brought into issues that directly concern um, the history of the town and the historic landscape of the town. So I'm grateful that Ed Dombrowski is here tonight. And I yeah, think I, I think his hand is raised. So let's call on him to let we'd love to hear from him on this subject. Hi everyone. I, um, I'm Ed Dombrowski, one of your, the, your town councilors, and I, I'm actually I'm here because I'm the liaison uh, to the Histor Historical Commission. And so I just wanted to just introduce myself. And um, I, I'm actually more interested in, in hearing how the, as the meeting goes on. And then I had a couple of thoughts, um, if, it, if it pleases you, Madam Chair, um, at, towards the end with other matters um, relative to what I think the town can be doing 
um, and you know, um, in collaboration with what the historical commission is doing to really preserve the the character and the architecture and um, all the elements that make Wakefield such a unique, historically significant community. So uh, I don't want to take too much of the floor. So I'd be interested in hearing everyone else throughout the meeting. Then, if I could, could have the indulgence towards the end, I'd, I'd be happy to do so. Absolutely. Or if you'd you know rather talk, if you'd rather speak now to this particular subject. I, I, I'm happy to speak to the subject of um, Floral Way is, is, is was really um, a, a standalone project. Uh, to my knowledge, there's no um, expectation of connectivity of Floral Way to any other um, any other plans that that are throughout the town. Um, I do know that there was some miscommunication going on there. I, I know I, I spoke with Bill Reno directly, and he ex described to me the concerns. And um, I know he I believe he's has since a walk the site multiple times. I believe uh, Nancy he's provided you. Um, with with some options that he's that he's used um, in in uh, Concord uh, specifically, um, but he he does I know recognize the importance and the and the historical significance of the area, and I know he's he he had no hesitation when I had the conversations with him and working with this this commission to make sure that there was a satisfactory resolution to it. Well, as I we might as well take this this subject out of where it was and bring it up into public participation um, because I did meet with Bill. Um, it, it really was shocking to us that that he that uh, that the town had not considered us and he had he explained to me that he had uh, gone to meetings of the Friends of Lake Quantapowit, the Clean Lake Committee, the Conservation Commission, and, and several other meetings and, and had consulted as well with the Commission on Disability Issues. And I, I, I couldn't understand why he and the, and the rest of the town didn't, didn't realize that this little area is probably the one of the most significant historic landscape that we have in its original condition from the 17th century. I mean, that's, that's shocking. And the, the idea of, of like a public pathway being there, while I certainly can appreciate accessibility issues, but um, like a bikeway kind of thing or, or hot top uh, kind of path is really not, not acceptable um, to me personally he he was quite um, willing to work with us and to come up with different alternatives. John, I know he met with you as well, and um, and he showed us he showed you and he showed me and maybe you too, Julie, a, a rolled stone kind of treatment. While that's still a, kind of a hot top, but oh, there are alternatives that one, that. I'm sorry. I did somebody oh, say hot something? top. It's uh, uh, it's just aggregate with a binder on a hot top. That's it. Right, right. But he had different. He had other ideas, and he was going to be exploring them. He needed a little more time to Nancy, flesh it out. Nancy, I know he told you and, and talked about his, his. He did great work in Concord. I go to Concord a lot to walk, and in the bridge area of Concord, it's a very similar area to what we have by our lake. There's a water source, a waterway there, canoeing the bridge, the North Bridge going over the river. And it's it's not a very different surface than what we have now. And clearly it's handicapped accessible. So there are other alternatives out there. And that's why it would be really important to be included in this process going forward. And I, I still can't, I can't stress enough. There's a bigger picture and I'm not sure everybody here on the screen that I'm seeing is involved in the baseball game that gets to see the bigger picture. But what are these other areas that we might be seeing coming forward? They might not necessarily be in the historical district, but people are interested and, and, and we work hard and we can help and we can give great ideas. Right, and as you, I'm glad that you called attention to the Historical Commission has a, a website that identifies the town's significant sites and the town's national register sites. Uh, I'm not even sure if it's um, accessible from the town's website. 
this here. I did not yeah. find this on the website. It should be on the town's website. Right. This is a fabulous document. I also don't understand why. I, if you could explain how the historical commission gets appointed, I know you're a town board. I don't understand how if you're if you're part of our government, how you were overlooked. And it can't I'd like happen. to know that too. <laughs> it and it's not right. We're it's not, been a, it's been not a matter of, of continuing right. frustration to us um, for many years. So um, now that we have, we never before had um, a representative that we could uh, address concerns to on the town council. So I, th I think it's great that we'll, we'll be able to, um, to have that in the future. Um, one thing that, that I was able to show um, Mr. Renault the other day, Bill, um, was, a, um, was a photograph of the floral way area taken in the 1930s. And um, I'd kind of like to show it to everyone here and get an idea of, and get a, a feeling from you as to whether or not you would think this was um, an option. Because the, the, the old burying ground has a lot of issues and one of them is the gravestones are disappearing at quite a rate. And um, we, we have to safeguard it in some way. So anyway, let me just show you if I can find this. I'm not good at sharing my screen, <laughs> but if I can find this um, picture, I'd really like your input on it, okay? All right, if it doesn't work out, I'll get you right back, I hope. Okay. What do you think of a fence? Like time travel. Yeah. <laughs> Is that a white wooden picket fence? It's a white wooden fence from the, the original granite um, supports that are still there. Oh. Are part well, of this fence. If it's real wood and Nantucket would require real wood, that looks right. what, like you would find on Nantucket. Right. It's quite beautiful. Yeah, and it would go along with, with the feeling of that we're trying to do at the Hartshorn House as well. And um, when, when he, Bill, walked the path with Mary Eldridge, she's a member of the uh, she's one of the 30 or so directors of the Hartshorn House Association. She was not being asked on to rule or, or give an overview on the whole thing. So that was kind of kind of unfair. But but anyway, I just wanted to put this picture out there and kind of get get an idea from you as to what you what you would think about. Um, I like uh, it personally. Yeah, because uh, if you're on the path, people can wander off the path, and this way, uh, the fence would prevent them from doing that, ex except for th the gate wherever it would be to enter uh, the cemetery. Yeah, and there would be a gate. Um, they could. There could be a series of different gates. Yes, there could be more than one. Nancy, like everything else, I would have a concern for vandalism. Right. Um, it's a beautiful white fence and there are different types of paints. I really think if you're going to do it, it would have to be wood. It, it does look different. Wood, wood looks pure. It looks historically correct. Um, but there are different paints that you could have that if somebody did do something stupid, painting right. or whatever, it could easily be removed with certain types of paint. I guess I'm making a... a I'm kind of in favor of this look, both because it would be historically accurate to one period, um, but also because I'm worried, I'm really worried about how many of the gravestones and the footstones are going off. We and have to increase the security off. there. Uh, what's the mechanism for their going off? Well, they come up out of the ground because of frost heaves and everything else. 
bits and pieces of them break off. Um, I'm an antique dealer, as you might know, and I was told that there were flea market vendors who were selling gravestones that came from Wakefield. Oh. This was pretty shocking to me. I have a comment to make about that. Uh, okay. For 15 years, I was a tour guide for Boston's North End, and I went into the Copse Hill Burial Ground. The stones were a mess. Several people on my tour, uh, they were disappointed. And as a result, uh, somebody got in touch with the city of Boston, the, the director of the cemeteries, and Copse Hill has been totally refurbished. And it might be a good idea to get uh, that person to come to give us a talk to give us an idea of what we might do with our burial ground to restore it. Well, I read really? recently that um, the that Braintree had put one point two million dollars into their old burying ground. I don't well, think that's probably going to happen in Wakefield. No, I don't think so either. <laughs> but but, but, um, but we right now we're some, we could get some advice. That's what we need. Right, right. Yeah. But right now, the, the issue before us is the path and, and kind of, I'm just trying to get an idea on, and, and he is going to bring other ideas and other alternatives to all of us right. at our next meeting, uh, which will be the fourth of Tuesday in um, February. Nancy, you've got support. You've got people on here. You've got the Boys and Girls Club on here. You've got WCNA up here. You've got FOLQ up here regular concerned citizens. We, you know, there are a lot of people concerned and, and it's a beautiful area and it needs to be preserved and it's it, and as much with as much historical integrity integrity as possible. Right. Clearly to be handicapped accessible. And I think actually adding that fence, having a dad who's 90 with two types of cancer and I'm walking place, just that fence right there would make it a lot easier and just leveling it out. Um, of going to Concord with him. I took him there in his wheelchair and it was huge. Well, and it, it didn't necessarily have to be paved. Yeah, I'm sorry about the phone. It just will answer itself. <laughs> um, does anybody else have anything they want to say about this? Um, the path of uh, the floral way path right now. So you're Fine. saying at your next meeting, Bill will speak to it. So you would like right. us to come. You would right. like us I would meeting. love it if you came. Yeah. Okay. Or uh, come to all of our meetings. We're, we're very open and, well, and very and friendly. And we and we are actively seeking new ideas and, and lots of support from the community. One of so. the concerns I have about redoing the path is I see so many younger people now on electric motorbikes and scooters. And I think if that's widened and made really smooth, they're going to zoom down by there and use it for recreation. I don't think we want that to happen. And Jean, there's also no lighting down there. Oh. So they would be drinking. You know, it's a great place to congregate out of the, the light of the street. Um, there's no lighting behind, you know, when the tennis lights go off and all that. So well, it's a, a great place to congregate. Agreed. Yeah. So, Jean, I, I walk the lake quite often, and um, there are kids who will ride their bikes down the current path. Oh. Towards the, you know, towards the tennis courts. Okay. Um, so what, what is being proposed is no different than what is currently happening today. I see. Okay. Except it's being made wider, I think. It could encourage more, more people to use it, but I mean... Um, the lake is a very popular spot once Absolutely. the weather changes and you know people are outside walking even in the winter it's still quite popular yeah they were skating on it this week there were over 50 people on the lake on sunday skating yeah. okay well um if there's any if there's no one else who wants to be heard on this subject I just wanted to mention, uh, if I could, Nancy, that um, the intention was always to um, focus on the ADA compliance issue with Floral Way. That's really what drove a lot of this. Um, and 
there's certain this expectation was certainly never to change the character of it to the extent that it was it, becoming a bike way or for scooters or anything of the sort. But we can certainly, as a town, you know, have signage if if need be, you know, in a tasteful way that's that's in fitting with the area that makes it clear that you know no no motorized vehicles, no bikes, not anything of the sort. I'm sure we we could you know, make that accommodation happen if that is something that, that's a concern of this commission. That's great, and I, I appreciate that's very I'm very much appreciated. But I still don't understand since there are other ways to make it ADA compliant. I don't understand how a textured pathway came to be without asking the historical commission or any other I, in, in group or even anybody in that neighborhood. Well, it's, I, it's, I and it's, I, it's an overused phrase, but the lake and the common, it's everybody's front lawn and there are being major renovations to our front lawn again and we weren't told. I don't want to speak for Bill in terms of the, the, the outreach. I think, Nancy, you have a sense of that, and I know that that's ongoing. So uh, again, that's something that would really come through DPW. Um, and I know that he's been very receptive to um, looking at this and taking in the concerns that have been raised. But from a, a process standpoint, that is something that you know, needs to be improved upon so that um, this commission is is engaged earlier on. And I think that's absolutely you know, a reasonable concern to have. Um, and that would, be a part of my part of my thinking with just the broader picture of how the commission has more of an impact in terms of the way that we we progress forward with developments, with restoration, uh, with trying to prevent a lot of the loss of character um, and charm that um, we can all take great pride in in our community. So um, I, I think that is part of a broader discussion, certainly. And Ed, I, I appreciate everything you just said. If I could add one thing, I, I did go to the lake. Is it the Lake Advisory mm -hmm. Committee that was part of this as well? The lake. Yeah. That new lake. It, it may have been the Clean Lake Committee. Yeah, it was. Yeah, because um, in one of his emails, he said, you know, I, I could have gone to one of those meetings or I could have looked at the agenda and at the minutes. Well, last I looked, the minutes weren't up. And, I, and you know, I go to a lot of meetings. I can't go to all of them. Um, and I, I just don't. It, the, the committee doesn't meet anymore, I don't believe. And there's nowhere to the, find those minutes. The, the committee does meet. Um, I, I'm not sure about the minutes, but I'll, I'll look into it. Certainly. Yeah. They, like any they, other committee, we should have quite sparingly. They met sure. quite sparingly. And there was nothing meaty in their agendas for me to grab hold on to that to say, oh my God, they're gonna pave the pathway. Look at this agenda. That wasn't what the agendas included. As a resident, you need sufficient information on meeting agendas. And you need yeah, you need sufficient detail on meeting agendas. Well, the Clean Lake Committee though, wouldn't it be there, there, there wouldn't have been a reason for the Clean Lake Committee to have had um, the, this project because it's not their project. It really falls from the, through out of DPW. So if there's something there where we have to make sure that we have, we, we have a lot of um, checks and balances with, within departments, you know, when there are applic various applications, they get approved by various departments. And so I think we could probably think about how we do something similar to make sure that all the stakeholders are included in these sorts of you know items going forward, and that's that's a reasonable ask, and and something I think we can certainly as a town improve upon. And it, I, you know, I was a science teacher, sixth grade, and the MCAS question would be about runoff, and which would you prefer for runoff, a structured surface like concrete with the aggregate paving on top, or would you prefer something that is sim more similar to what we have now and what Concord has now? And the answer would be something similar to what we have now, but maintained and directed in a different way away from the lake. And I think that's why the Clean Lake Committee may have been involved was perhaps to talk about the runoff issues and stuff like that. Okay, well, is anybody else interested in, in being heard on the subject? Okay, if not, then we will we'll, we will move on to the next item on our agenda. And thank you all once again who who came um, to be heard on the subject of the work to be done on the floral way. Um, the historical commission, you have received the minutes from the last meeting. Did you have a chance to look through them? Mm -hmm. Do you have any changes? or corrections? I didn't, I didn't see any corrections and it looked fine to me. Okay, can I have a motion to accept the minutes as um, submitted? 
I move we accept the, the minutes from the previous meeting as submitted. Okay. Second that. All right, thanks Fran, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Okay, on the subject of historical house markers, we have um, another application for a historical house marker and we have a problem. The vendor who has been creating our markers at a very, very affordable price of $68 delivered to their people's home, all custom made and hand lettered, he has passed away. So we have to find a new vendor and we have to find one soon. Um, is there um, on the commission, is there anyone who would like to work with me, help me to, uh, to find another vendor? I can uh, help out with that, Nancy. Frank? Yes, absolutely. Yep. Um, uh, we do have a gentleman in town. I, I mentioned in a previous email to you guys, uh, David Workman. He is an artist, mm -hmm. and um, I think he could produce the he he lives right here in town and i think he could he could do a good job of of producing the markers for us um but he his wood tools are limited so i don't know if he can make the same shape so maybe we'd want to make the shape a little more simplified similar to the markers that went up in the 1940s actually and uh are around in many communities um, okay. Do you, do you have a, like a graphic sample that you could send to me just so that I have? Yeah, something I will. For... I will. Okay. Yeah, and but and I'm looking for other because the gentleman that has been working with us, he'd also um, he also did Salem and and I Ipswich, and you know all of the the nicer historical communities. You see them everywhere. <clears throat> And so it's a big crisis and everybody's kind of scrambling. It would be nice if we had somebody local. Okay. Well, I actually, I'm, um, I'm starting a new job on the 7th uh, as a project manager for an architectural sign studio out of Woburn. They're okay. Called Blue Bluebird Graphic Solutions. So I'm on the cusp of hopefully gaining a lot of contacts in that uh, area of expertise. So um, I can certainly kind of, you know, when the time comes, when I get to that point, I can kind of put some feelers out and, um, maybe they can point me in a good direction and, uh, and I can certainly check other avenues as well. Okay. Is there anybody else that would like to work on this project among the commission? So Nancy, Nancy, this yep. is Fran. I, Hi, I just Fran. want, if, if Dave Workman doesn't have the tools or need some assistance from, um, from someone um, if you're trying to keep them to look exactly the same way as the gentleman in Maine had been doing, I, I don't know what your objective is right now. You know, short term, trying to keep the same look and feel until a, a, a more significant project can, I guess, take place with other communities because they're all going to have the same issue. If, if, if they're all going to go, I mean, because right around us, we have Reading has Markarian sign do a little stamped out uh, sign that, that um, just has a date. And I don't think we want that. I, I mean, I like the, the, the um, personalization of the, the, the people could have the name of their house and the, the date when it was constructed, something like five whole lines, as well as Wakefield Historical Commission at the bottom. Okay. Um, and, and Bob Leonard in Maine was willing to do all of those things because he just yeah. loved it. Um, and so I don't, I didn't really like the idea of like vinyl lettering or anything like that. Um, so I kind of was open to having David look into it, but um, I'm certainly open to other ideas. Okay, so I mean, if he's more an artist and he could do the, the handwritten part and it's just helping him with the construction of the, the wooden sign. Right. Reach out, reach out to me after you talk to him and I could possibly um, get some people who are local to help him out until we have a more permanent solution. 
Great. That would be great. Okay. Frank. Sure. Great. We can hopefully satisfy the, the issue with um, the one poor lady who's been waiting. She's patient. Uh, she understands our situation. But um, our flyers are allegedly going out in the MLD stuffer. And they will um, invite people to participate in the program. Um, so hopefully there'll be a demand for it. So kind of these two things happened at kind of a bad time. <laughs> of course, it's never a good time for someone to pass away, but um, that would be great. And uh, Frank, we'll, we'll loop you in on this as well. Great. So we can come up with a permanent solution. And thank you both. Okay, on the um, matter of the demolition delay bylaw, lots of recent calls have come in for information, I think. The real estate market is booming, and I think a lot of people are looking at the older housing stock. We haven't received any uh, requests for demolition um, within the past month um, or since our last meeting. Um, but under this same heading, the our list of significant sites, Jen and Therese were working on looking at the um, verifying the, the sites on our list. How are you coming, Jen? Um, actually, I think I'm all done. There was a- You're a all done? Of, yeah, there's a handful of sites that I couldn't get to, especially down by um, the construction down by Broadway. Um, so those, those couple I couldn't get because um, the road was blocked off. Um, although now I think about it, maybe I should go back and go check one more time to see if it's open. Um, I know Frank um, went and um, I, I think someone else also helped, helped me out a little bit. But um, I have it on, on Google Sheets that I can share um, what, what I found um, on my end. Um, it was it was it was a very interesting exercise. I'm glad I did it. It's great. It was a lot of work for you, but it gave you a real eye opener, I think, into the the character and the history of the town of Wakefield. Just to drive around looking it, for it, all these sites. It, it did, and, and I I've lived here for ten years, and there were some streets that I've actually never gone on before. So it was actually a great exercise to drive around and see some neighborhoods I'd never seen, and, and and encountered some beautiful houses that were in my neighborhood that I just had never noticed because they were on a small little dead end street, and I just never gone there, and I was wowed. It was there's some beautiful houses and some beautiful structures in this town. You know, when once you get the uh, when, and I know you're working uh, with Therese is working on this or her half of the, the sites as well. Maybe when it's all finished and we can put it up as a verified list, uh, we can encourage people to get out there and walk around and look for all the sites or drive around and look for all the sites as well. Um, because it is, it is really fascinating. That's a great so, idea. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. And, um, and still later in the spring, Jean, I still want you to be working on a possible walking tour of historic Greenwood. If you could identify some sites that we could maybe put on our list. Okay. Okay. You just as we have um, uh, like a historic walking tour online of um, Prospect Street and Church Street and a historic online walking tour of the lake that people can walk around with their phones and just click um, the, to get the information. I think Greenwood is underappreciated and um, you, you do a lot of walking all over the place and have a lot of experience with it. So put that in the back burner there and we'll, we'll work on that in the spring. Okay. Okay. I don't do as much walking as I used to. I'm 85 now and my back and my knees are giving out on me, but I still do some walking. <laughs> and you've seen and you and you appreciate you have a fine appreciation for it. So right. and you you can also drive around too. That's accessible. That's yeah. okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. All right, um, on the subject of our budget, the Historical Commission budget has been level funded to $2,000 a year. So I just wanted to um, bring you all up to date with that. Do you think that's adequate? Um, 
the, the reason I bring it up, there's been so much inflation, uh, some of the things you might spend it on may be costing more than they used to. It, it's like there would never be enough money. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> and so this is at least a whole lot more than we used to get. Um, so um, so, so it's a good question though. Never... It's, a, it's a good question, Jean. Okay. Um, you, um, yeah, but that, that's the way it is anyway for the, for the upcoming year. Okay. And now on, um, in other matters, uh, Frank and Jen and Kathleen all went to a, um, a joint meeting of historical commissions of other towns. And Frank um, was kind enough to put together his, um, great notes that he had taken from the uh, from the experience and emailed them to us all. So as long as um, we have the opportunity, I wanted to know if anybody had any questions about that. Did you all get the chance to review Frank's email? No, I haven't seen it. No? We got it some time ago. We'll put it on the list for our, our next meeting, then I'll resend that. Okay. With with the agenda for our okay. next meeting, so you all get the chance to uh, look it over, um, so we can discuss it at our next meeting. And thank you, Frank, for all the work you did in putting that together. Oh, of course. Okay. Also, under other matters, um, I would like to remind. Well, Tourette, um, Kathleen and, and Dan, Dan, of course, isn't here, uh, have to put their application in in order to um, be reappointed, which I hope they will want to do. And I'll um, send an email to them to remind them. Now, is there anybody else who had um, who wanted to add anything to our meeting? Ed? Uh, thank you, Nancy. Um, I just wanted to mention to everyone that you know, part of the reason why I was very much interested in being liaison to the to this commission is that um, I, I saw this as an opportunity for all of us to work together to try to figure out ways in which um, the commission can be more ro robust within the community. I, as I understand it, and Nancy, you you may know better, or perhaps Jean, you may know. Um, a number of years ago, there I, I understood there was like some consideration of trying to put in you know, different regulations relative to um, houses or construction or things of the sort that didn't seem to be, I guess, as I understand it, particularly well received. Um, I know that if you look at some place, and it was mentioned earlier, Nantucket, for example, that the entire island is, um, is part of the Historic District Commission. So the HDC really regulates a lot of what, what happens from house colors to you know, uh, additions and, and, and the like. That, that is certainly something that would not you know, be, I don't believe, well received here in Wakefield. But I do think that there's an opportunity here for us to explore how we can better preserve what we have left here. Um, and in addition, when when there are perhaps histo historically, I'll say insignificant properties that may be raised and then something else built, how we can try to um, encourage or foster an environment where um, things are developed more with an eye towards character, to the history of our town, to the architectural components of our town. I, I just feel like we don't have that right now. Um, so I'm trying to find a balance and, and doing a lot of work in the downtown, pro uh, the downtown project, the Envision project. A lot of that is facade work, for example. And I've seen a number of photographs where there have been some really unique buildings and some really incredible architecture that has really been stripped away from so much of what we have. So from houses, to you know, uh, commercial spaces, I feel like um, we haven't had enough of um, enough of a presence of the commission with, within our within our town. And, and how can we improve that? You know, how can we make it so that um, people don't feel too restricted with how they can you know, develop or 
enhance their property, but also be encouraged. You know, um, for um, for example, on Nantucket, they have a listing of approved, you know, colors for, for front doors, for instance, or colors for homes. I'm not saying that that's the direction Wakefield would go in, but perhaps the commission could come up with, you know, historically significant colors or combinations and then um, have those available so that people could access them and encourage them you know, to do so uh, when they're thinking about you know, doing a renovation project or for the, the builders that are coming into town, when they're looking at you know, um, what the design and architecture looks like, hey, these are some elements from other, you know, other things that, that have been done in the past and, and, and you know, perhaps a renewed focus on, on what our history here is here in town. I know that this isn't something to be resolved tonight, certainly, or in a short amount of time, but I'm happy to work with, with anyone and everyone that's interested in doing that and doing whatever I can on the, on, you know, on the town council side too, to try to move that, you know, move that through in a way that, that is meaningful, you know, so that there's more engagement with, with the, the ZBA, for instance, you know, there's more engagement with um, the building department, for instance, there's more ways in which we can, you know, kind of more collaboratively um, insert the commission and I think our shared goals and mission um, into preserving what we have, but also looking at what's coming, you know, in, into the future and trying to, to have a stamp on that, um, you know, as best we can. So that that's, you know, really what my, one of my overarching goals is. I mentioned it at the town council meeting last night. And again, um, I, I'd love to you know, be able to collaborate with the commission to figure out ways that we can do that. Some, some years ago, I think we tried to get a section of the town be, to be a historic district, but it didn't work. People didn't go for it. Uh, that's exactly right, Jean. We did try to um, um, have get the neighbors on Church Street. Church to Street, be, um, right. And, and um, a historic district has to have buy-in from uh, with a historic district commission oh, and with okay. all the teeth involved and re um, restrictions and things like that it has to have buy-in from the neighbors oh, wow. um, so that the the property owners themselves are part of it and they didn't want to even hear about it <laughs> they, <laughs> They were, um, if you remember, I made a nice PowerPoint presentation that took me three months to work on, and um, I was afraid we'd be killed on our way out of the, <laughs> the selectmen's meeting. <laughs> um, we had the support of the First Parish Congregational Church and the Hartshorn House Association, <laughs> and um, I think one of the neighbors on Church Street, and even though we, we did stress to them that he, that you neighbors would agree to have your property. You have to agree in order for this to happen or for, or for your property to, to, to be considered contributory to the historic district. They, they just didn't want to have any kind of restrictions at all. And so it, it's a hard sell. Okay. Um, and we have thought at, at times of possibly and this is my dream, okay, is to have a historic district that would start at the top of Prospect Street and go all the way down to the top of Salem Street. Because this is the first, you know, one of the first areas to be settled and one of the most scenic areas as well. And, um, and a lot of people who have, are very proud of their homes and their home's history. So that's a project, and because it's so, so long, you know, even if we have buy-in from even like six property owners, we may be able to make that happen. So that's a um, that's a on my my wish list. Um, it's something that I've always thought would be a wonderful thing for the town, and it might even who knows if there could be possible traffic calming or some kind of traffic solution worked into that as well. Because Lord knows the trip down Prospect Street is not fun <laughs> um, around five o'clock. Um, however, um, I, I think Ed, it's, uh, I'm really heartened by your coming to our meeting tonight. Um, I think the first, this is the first step in, in maybe um, 
getting greater visibility for the historical commission. And a great second step would be for us to be more integrated into the town, um, in the town departments, because we're never copied on things. Um, when, when there's a, an issue having to do with any kind of a historic property, especially one that is owned by the town, we should be included. Um, we should be copied on that. We should be asked for input on it. And, um, and, and you could help us with that. Well, one thing that stood out to me recently is um, the, the old, the, the train station here right across from St. Joe's um, had to, there had been some work done and it, it was encouraged because it seemed like they were you know, trying to enhance the, the appearance, but then they were doing roofing and they had, they had a permit for roofing, um, but then they ended up adding skylights to, to um, that are very visible from North Avenue. And it really just, to me, fundamentally changed the character. So I had followed up on it and determined that, you know, we just don't have really much on the books at all relative to that short of, you know, issues of demolition. Um, but that really stood out to me as, as an example of, you're taking a, a really beautiful building that has historical value. And I think just cheapening it, you know, candidly by putting in, you know, skylights in a very prominent, you know, location. Um, it just doesn't look the same. Every time I look at that building now, that's the first thing I see you know, for instance. And, it, and I don't think it had to be that way, um, but I, I just don't think there's much, um, there, there, I don't think we have we have enough engagement at this point. And if you look, um, we, we've spent a lot of our uh, of state resources on the Albion corridor from Main Street to North Ave. And so I've been really engaged with that project and, you know, new street lights that are pedestrian scale, it'll be paved, repaved, there's new sidewalks, there'll be plant, you know, hang, um, hanging planters, there'll be trees there now. And the biggest challenge we have there now isn't the streetscape, but the um, loss of character of so many of the buildings. You know, fortunately, the old gas and light building run by the town is, is has the character. But if you look at so many of the other the other buildings that are there, you see that the architecture exists for a, num a number of them. You know, they've, it's either not been they've not been maintained or they've just been stripped away, which I think is the more common issue. And so you have this kind of hodgepodge of, um, you know, of, of nearly characterless, you know, um, buildings, one, one against the other. And what we're trying to create as a, as a quaint downtown, you know, uh, business district, which, which candidly has a real economic impact for, for the businesses too, you know, um, and there's real opportunity there if we can do something so it doesn't feel punitive, but instead um, encouraging, you know, and so I, I don't know what, how, how to strike that balance exactly, but I do know that there are opportunities that, that we should, you know, probably consider exploring them, and I'm happy to be on board with that. Uh, one building I'm concerned about is the present Sandander Bank. That's a fabulous building, and they're building a new bank across from the Miracle Center. Uh, they're closing their uh, uh, the box where you can keep things. They're moving that to uh, Melrose, and I don't want the new owner of the, the present bank to do something to that building because that really has character. Mm. And I'm afraid once it's sold, uh, because I don't think it's on the register. Yeah, it is. Is it? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, then I feel better about it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but that whole area of Albion Street, I agree with you. That's uh, people have made changes all, all along that, that street. Yeah, there's an 18th century building house on Albion Street. And then oh. there's uh, the house where Charles F. Archorn lived, which is now the, um, um, that used to be a corset store. <laughs> Florence's, Florence's fashion. Yeah. Um, yeah, that, that is a, a Victorian building. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then there are a couple of other ones as well. Yeah. Um, but and the item building itself, the item building is yeah. is also historically um, important. And on Foster Street, there are two wonderful historic buildings um, within view of uh, of Albion Street, just oh. off Albion Street. So maybe that's like a little opportunity as well. So um, anyway, it's very exciting to think that we'll be. Um, able to have more input and work with the rest of the community. So I thank you 
again, Ed, for coming to our meeting. Um, does anybody else want to chime in? No? Well, if that's the case, then I'm going to, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. No, everybody just wants to stay. <laughs> motion to adjourn the meeting. Thank you, Fran. <laughs> I second it, Fran. <laughs> second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Okay. I'll see all of you guys in February.